Hi guys, this is Liz Kaneda from Sleek Lens. Today I have a general tutorial on the Fashion Nova collection of Photoshop actions. So this collection comes with 62 fashion actions and it's really great for perfecting skin tones, enhancing colors, tone, contrast, uh, all in your fashion photography. So I have a few photographs pulled up here in Photoshop and I have my actions loaded up over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so the first action I'm going to use is a base action and I'm going to be using the base underexposed fix. I'm sorry, base overexposed fix is the one I'm going to use for this photograph. So once I've selected the action, I'm just going to go ahead and hit play. And as you can see, if I hit the little eye icon right here, you can see that it's kind of fixed the highlights and that overexposed that we had going on before. So it's not much of a difference, but it does something. So next thing I'm going to do is just flatten the image so I can add new layers. Now I'm going to be using an all-in-one. So I'm going to be using the Fashion All-in-One Milano. So you select the action again and hit play. So with this all-in-one you're going to get a lot of dialog boxes that are going to kind of instruct you on how to change each layer. So the first dialog box you have is the area light for the sunlight. So just go ahead and hit continue. So up here it's going to show you the gradient of the sunlight and as you can see I can drag it around here if I want and you can see what it looks like. You can of course change the color up in here and you can change the angle but I'm just going to leave it the way it is and I'm going to drag it up into the upper corner and just push it up and out of the frame a little bit so there's a little bit of sunlight coming in but it's not too extreme. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. The next dialog box is going to come up and what this one is going to be is this layer is a curve layer that's going to show you how to kind of increase and decrease the brightness and darkness of the photograph. So hit continue. So if you want you could always just leave this the way it is. Or what you can do is right now I have it on the channel RGB so all of my colors and I'm going to get this curve here and basically what I want to do with this white curve here is you want a kind of nice S curve that's what's really going to kind of give you a well-balanced, nice contrast. So as you can see, I've kind of got this nice S shape going on. I'm going to hit OK. And now the last dialog box is going to show me the colors and how I can change the colors in this photograph. So just go ahead and hit continue. And here we have our drop-down box of all the colors that can be affected. So the first color I'm going to work with is, you don't have to work with all the colors, it's up to you. I'm going to work with the reds, and now it's going to tell me that within the reds, the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black percent of each of these. So what I want to do is I want to enhance her bathing suit color, so I'm going to kind of take the magenta and push it up. And as you can see, the difference here. So it gets a more orange tone, or faded tone, and then if we go up here, we get a nice red color. So I'm going to pull that up as well as pull the black up a little bit and the yellow up as well. Now I'm going to go down here to my cyan. And as you can see, some of the colors in the photograph that have a nice blue or teal tone. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of just change those a little bit. Make them a little bit darker. And hit OK. So the next dialog box we have is the Area Light Soft Haze, which is basically a haze that you can put over your photograph. So same as with the sunlight, you can drag it to wherever you want in the photograph. I'm going to put it really lightly in this bottom corner. And then I'm going to hit OK. And the last dialog box is just a quick reminder that you can go ahead and change all these layers over here. So within all these layers in the all-in-one Fashion Milano, we have a film grain up here. And I actually don't like the film grain, so I'm just going to hit the eyeball and take that off. Actually, I'm just going to delete that layer altogether. Alright, so I like the way these layers look in this all-in-one, so I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image. The next action I'm going to use is the bonus action that comes with it, which is the advanced portrait retouch. So I'm going to go ahead and select the action and hit play. Now this box right here is basically looking for dust and scratches and this is going to work for when I do some frequency separation and smooth out her skin a little bit, so just hit OK. Alright, so we've applied the action to the photograph and now we have all our layers. 
The first one I'm going to use is the frequency separation folder right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And you want to go and, it, and you want to click on the low tones layer. And I'm going to be working mostly with her face, so I'm just scrolling in a little bit. All right, so I have the low tones layer selected. Next thing I'm going to do is use my lasso tool. And I'm going to use this to select any areas that are kind of bumpy that I want to smooth out a little bit. So right on her cheek here. So once you've selected the area, you want to go up to Filter, and you're going to go to Blur. And you're looking for something that says Gaussian Blur. And then as you can see, if I slide this up, it shows you how much it smooths it out. So if we're going, you want to kind of stay under 5, because after that it starts to look a little bit weird. So I'm going to be using 1.7. And then I'm going to use it up on her forehead. And this time I'm just going to, the filter that you last used is already up here, so I'm just going to do it again. And just one on the side as well. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and I'm actually going to do her armpit here as well. All right, so we've blurred out a little bit of those. I'm going to close the frequency separation folder, and now I'm going to be using the dodge and burn. So dodging basically is lightening up a part of the photograph, and burning would be darkening it. So basically what you're going to do is select your paintbrush. You have the dodge and burn layer selected. You want to make sure your paintbrush opacity is down low around 5%. I'm going to leave mine at 6. And then basically, what you're going to use is the black and white here to switch. So the white is anything you want to dodge. So I'll turn this up a little bit so you can see. So basically what you're going to do is mostly use the dodge and burn to kind of contour her face. So when you're dodging, you want to kind of do a triangle under the eye. You want to go up the bridge of the nose, the forehead, the chin, and right above on the cupid's bow here. All right, so if I turn the eye off, you can see the light that I've added to her face. While I'm doing it, it doesn't seem like much of a difference, but here you can actually see. So now that I've done the dodged part of her face, I'm going to move on to the burn. So I have the same layer selected here. I'm just going to go over and hit the arrows to switch. So now the black is selected, and I'm going to be burning in parts of her face. All right, so first I'm going to start with the eyebrows and just make them a little bit darker. The next thing we're going to contour is her face. So just making my brush a little bit bigger, you want to go under the cheekbone and up around the temple up here. I am just going to change the opacity a little bit higher. So do under her other cheekbone. And you want to kind of go in a C motion, sweeping this way and along the jawline. Make your brush a little bit smaller and then you want to burn from the sides of the bridge of the nose up towards the eyebrow. Alright, and I'm actually going to change back to my dodge real quick and I'm going to use that just to dodge some of the darkness in here. All right, so if I hit this, you can see the difference in her face. So we've just kind of brought out her bone structure and gave her a nice glow and added a little bit of contrast to her skin. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to click the Sharpen, and you want to click the Layer Mask right here. And you want to put your opacity around 50 to 70 for eyes and then 40 to 50 for lips. So I'm just going to put it on 50 and then basically use my brush to just sharpen up her eyes here and her lips. All right. Now I'm going to open the levels included in the advanced portrait retouch. And I'm going to play with the colors a little bit for this photograph. I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to go to my blues. I want to bring a little bit more blue into the shadows of this photograph. So I have my blue levels here. I'm going to pull it in a little bit. As you can see, it makes it kind of greener. So we're going to pull that in a little bit, but to counteract that, pull up the darks here 
and we'll get a little bit more of a blue hue. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image. The last thing I'm going to do is not an action, but I'm just going to do a little bit of retouching on her face using the Band-Aid tool here. So you want to hold down the Option key, which will help you select the area. And I'm just going to get rid of these little bumps here. You, of course, don't have to do this, but it's just a quick way to get rid of little imperfections. And the last thing I'm going to do is take my clone stamp tool, put my opacity down around 27, make the brush much smaller, and then I'm just going to sample the area underneath her cheek and just kind of run it under her eyes to get rid of any dark circles. Then I'm going to use my bandy tool one more time and just get rid of these lines right here. All right, so that's about it for this photograph. All right, so here's the before, and I'm going to pull up the after for you. I'm sorry, this is the after. Here is the before. All right, so as you can see, this is what we started with, which is still a nice photograph, a little bit overexposed, but it's lacking a lot of color and rich tones and doesn't really have that polished kind of fashion look that you're going for. So on the left here, we've kind of added sunlight and haze. We've increased the skin tone and the bathing suit color, and we've just overall given it a nice, better polished look. All right, so I'm going to move on to another photograph now. Show you a couple more actions that come in this. All right, so for this photo, I'm going to be starting with the advanced. Actually, I'm going to start with a fashion tone tint. So you want to go ahead and open your actions. You're going to go up, and for this one, I'm going to be using a tone and tint fashion action, and I'm going to be using midnight blue. So select it and then hit play. All right, so this is applied kind of a tone and tint filter to my photograph. I'm going to go ahead and open this file. And basically, as you can see, this preset, or not preset, but this action is filled with a bunch of different layers, which you can, of course, change and play with. So if I hit the eye, you can see the difference in some of the layers. The colors change, the tones change. So I'm actually going to turn this one off and this one as well. And let me just see. This takes the matte effect away. So I'm going to keep it just like this. I'm going to close the Tone and Tint folder and flatten the image. So now this time I'm going to be using the Advanced Portrait Retouch again. So scroll down. And I'm going to hit Play on that action. Hit OK. And again, we're going to be working with her face area, and we're going to start with the frequency separation and smooth out her skin a little bit. So I'm selecting the low tones again, zooming in on her face here. And we're going to do the same thing of using the lasso tool to select areas of her face. So I've selected this area, blur, Gaussian blur, and then you want to sit here and play with it a little bit until you get the right combination. All right, now that I've done that, I'm going to go close my frequency separation folder. And now I'm going into my dodge and burn. And again, I'm going to be contouring the face. So I'm selecting my brush here. I want to put my opacity somewhere around between 5 and 10%. I have the light selected. So I can go ahead and dodge here. So you're doing two inverted triangles under the eyes, up the bridge of the nose, 
and into the forehead here, the cupid's bow and the chin. So it doesn't look like much, but you can see the difference here. So now I'm going to switch here and do a little bit of burning. Make my brush a little bit bigger. So you're going under the cheekbone here along the hairline in a C motion. And along her jaw as well. Make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to burn her lipstick in a little bit. And along the sides of the nose here. And so if I hit this, you can see the contouring of her face. All right, so I'm going to use my Sharpen again. I have my brush. I'm going to send it to about 50%. And I'm going to be using that on her eyes and lips. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And in my Advanced Portrait Retouch, I'm going to open my color levels again. And again, I'm going to mess with the blue level and just be pulling it up a little bit. And then I'm going to use my reds as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image. And once again, like I did with the other picture, I'm going to zoom in and use a couple of Photoshop tools just to clean up some areas on her face, again using the band-aid tool to just get rid of any spots. And I'm going to use my clone tool here. Just sample under the eyes and kind of just to get rid of those bags right there under her eyes, the dark circles. You can also use your clone tool to kind of smooth out certain areas. I can use it to get rid of these little wispy hairs up here. Okay. And I'm just going to use it a little bit down here as well. Alright, and I'm going to do one more action on this photograph. So I'm going to open my actions up again. This time I'm going to be using the vignette. So what I'm looking for is the artistic add-ons. You're going to add the dark vignette, hit play. Basically you're getting another dialog box that's telling you you can you paint over the subject with a black brush uh, while the white layer mask is selected. So we've added the dark vignette. We have the white layer selected. We want to hit the black one here. Kind of make the brush a little bit bigger. First select the brush, make it bigger again. And then you're going to use this just to add a little bit of light to your subject and keep the darkness on the outside corners of the vignette. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. And I'm going to pull up the original. Alright, so here we have the original. So as you can see, still a nice photograph, but it is lacking certain colors. And what we've done is we've just given it a more polished look. We've added a lot of blue tones, kind of given it a matte effect. We've added a vignette, and we really brought out the detail and color in her clothes as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on the Fashion Nova collection of Photoshop Actions and you'll be able to try it out for yourself soon.